In the previous lecture, we saw the introduction of FET biasing and now in this presentation, I will explain fixed bias configuration of JFET. Fixed bias configuration is the simplest biasing arrangement. Fixed bias configuration is the simplest biasing arrangement and in this presentation, we will bias N-channel JFET. You can see the direction of arrow, it is N-channel JFET and we will use the mathematical approach to find out the operating point. Our prime aim is to find out the operating point and to calculate the operating point we have two approaches. The first one is mathematical approach and the second one is graphical approach. In this lecture we will follow the mathematical approach and in the next lecture we will follow the graphical approach. We have to perform DC analysis of this circuit and because of this reason, we can simplify this circuit further. We are performing the DC analysis. And due to this reason, we can simplify this circuit further. C1 and C2 are the coupling capacitors and the reactance offered by C1 and C2 for DC signal is equal to infinity because frequency of DC signal is equal to 0 Hz. And due to this reason, we can open circuit C1 and C2. So I will open circuit C1 and C2. Vi is the input voltage of this circuit and Vo is the output voltage of this circuit. And if we talk about input voltage of N channel JFET, then it is equal to VGS and the output voltage is equal to VDS. And as C1 and C2 are open circuited, we can remove Vi and VO. So this will be the circuit and you can clearly see potential at this point is equal to 0 volt and also potential at this point is equal to 0 volt. So I will connect these two points. We will connect the two points and the circuit will look like this. Now we will talk about resistance RG Resistance RG is important because we had voltage VI and we are calling this resistance R subscript G because it is connected to the gate branch and in this circuit we can short circuit the resistance RG. Let us try to understand how we can short circuit resistance RG. Current in this branch is the gate current and we already know the gate current in case of field effect transistors whether JFET or MOSFET is equal to 0 amp and IG the gate current is also the current through resistance RG and if V subscript R subscript G is the voltage drop across resistance RG then it is equal to current IG multiplied with resistance RG. IG you can see is equal to 0 amp so V subscript R subscript G is equal to 0 volt. So voltage drop across resistance RG is equal to 0 volt and because of this reason we can replace RG with short circuit. We will replace it with short circuit. In case of junction field effect transistors, current IDSS is already given and also the pinch of voltage VP. These two informations are given with the JFET. And now we will find out the input voltage VGS. We will find out the input voltage VGS by applying the Kirchhoff's voltage law in this loop. So we have minus VGG, minus VGG. Then we have minus VGS, minus VGS equal to zero. So VGS is simply equal to minus VGG. This is very important point. VGS is equal to minus VGG and this VGS is one of the coordinates of operating point. The operating point is having the coordinates VGS and ID and to represent that these coordinates are the coordinates of operating point we will write Q like this. So VGS is the X coordinate of the operating point and it is equal to minus VGG. VGG is fixed. VGG is a voltage source and it is fixed and due to this reason we call this biasing configuration 
fixed bias configuration. We call it fixed bias configuration because VGS is equal to minus VGG and VGG is fixed. Now let us try to find out IDQ, the Y coordinate of the operating point. The drain current is the current in this branch and to find out drain current we only have to use Shockley's equation. We know from Shockley's equation drain current ID is equal to IDSS. We have IDSS inside the bracket 1 minus VGS. We already know VGS is equal to minus VGG divided by pinch of voltage VP. We have the pinch of voltage. So in this way we have the two coordinates of operating point VGS and ID. In order to represent their coordinates of operating point you can also write them as VGSQ and IDQ. Now before ending this lecture let us try to find out the output voltage VDS. We have the input current it is equal to 0 amp. We have the input voltage VGS it is equal to minus VGG. We have the output current ID it is equal to IDSS 1 minus VGS by VP. We have whole square here and now we will find out the output voltage VDS. And in order to find out the output voltage VDS we will apply Kirchhoff's voltage law in the output loop. So let us try to find out VDS. We will start from VDD and we will end at ground. So we will end at 0 volt. VDD minus IDRD. VDD minus IDRD minus VDS minus VDS equal to 0 volt equal to 0 volt. So VDS is simply equal to VDD minus IDRD. So this is how you have to find out the output voltage VDS and uh, the things we have done in this lecture we have already done earlier. In case of bipolar junction transistors we have done all the things we have done now. There are few differences in case of field effect transistors. The differences are there in case of input and output parameters. So I think this lecture is clear. If you have any doubt you may ask in the comment section. In the next lecture we will follow the graphical approach to find out the operating point.